Hey, y'all. Welcome to Lifestyle Strength. This is Ariel and my co-host, Lucas. Y'all, what's up? Well, what's up? I guess my <laughs> accent's pretty strong today. Today, we're going to be talking about filling the gap. And to tie our last couple episodes together, something has been weighing on Lucas's mind. What is it, Lucas? Weighing like the plates on the bar. Oh, well, you do that too. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know... I think just to fully encompass everything we've gone over in the last few episodes, we've talked a lot about action. We've talked a lot about goals. Mm -hmm. We've talked a lot about figuring out what a person should do when they're faced with a barrier or something that they want more of, yes. right? From a very principal foundation, like we haven't gone into any specifics yeah, you know, other than maybe giving some examples of what a person can do when they have a goal and what they should focus on or where they should put their energy. What we haven't really talked so much about is why. And it's not a question that I can answer or that you can answer because we all have a different reason why something drives us to do a certain action. For sure. And I think I find so often that people set goals for no reason. And then when it comes to taking action on those goals, mm -hmm. they find it really, really difficult because there's nothing propelling them, you know, other than saying like, well, I need to do this or I want this goal. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes it's not the case or it's not, it's not enough. Right. Right. So example, I have a client that is is in limbo right now. Okay. And the reason she's in limbo is because she doesn't have a why. She knows she needs to be healthier. She knows that losing weight would help with that. Yeah. And she says she wants that, but the actions don't really follow with what she's saying she's wanting and so as a coach you know it's our it's our responsibility to peel back those layers and uncover mm -hmm. you know what can get a person to propel forward because i can tell you the reasons why you need to lose weight or you need to be healthier right right easy right you'll live longer you'll live better you'll be stronger you'll be able to pass that information down to your kids like i can tell you those things but unless you fully own them mm -hmm. and it, it hits home for you, right? then it, it's re we're really kind of wasting time, right? Because she has to discover that for herself. So what do you do when you're faced with a client that's kind of in that limbo and you're going, okay, well, clearly this person doesn't have a good why? Well, I ask the hard questions. And I think mm -hmm. people can do this for themselves. You know, mm -hmm. having having somebody in an outside perspective can ask the questions that you may not be able to think of right. for yourself. But instead of just assigning yourself a task or a goal or an outcome that you think you want, I think asking yourself tough questions of why do you want that thing mm -hmm. or why do you need that thing right. is really, really important not just so that you can have the drive to go do it, but so that you can fully understand the impact that it's going to make or has the potential to make on your life. Right. Or on, on the, the outcome that you're seeking. So a question that I would, I would have asked her is, is why did you start in the first place? Okay. Was the what was that initial spark? Sometimes when you can reflect back on when the motivation's hot, yeah, you can think back to what you were feeling emotionally in that moment, mm -hmm. and that might be help you to uncover a reason why. Right. I have a question. So from almost more of like a business perspective, yeah, because yeah. this is something that I learned um, through taking like some mentorship business programs that I've been a part of. Um, something that was talked about a lot is like 
uh, a lot of people have uh, what motivates them. Um, and then some people even have why they're motivated to run that business and do what they're doing. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, who they're doing it for and who being the biggest question. And right. they found it to be the biggest motivator. Um, just like sometimes I'm sure you've seen it where you get clients that come in and yes, they, they would love to feel better from day to day. Um, they would love to have, um, self-confidence when they look in the mirror, but some of them might be coming to you and the biggest motivator for them is who they're doing it for. And mm -hmm. it's like, I need to be able to, for my future self, be able to spend time with my kids and be able to raise my grandkids. Right. So it's not really ends up being about them at all it ends up being about somebody else right um totally. who, who's your who and a lot of times with my clientele that's the same thing you know i have people come in and they're like man you know i got a couple boys and i need to be able to play baseball with them and do their sports right. and i want to be able to throw the ball i want to be able to be around with my grandkids and and they know the standard to which they want to be able to hold themselves to mm -hmm. And they know that they're not at that. And so they're seeking practitioners like myself, somebody like you, um, who is willing and able to um, help them get there. Um, I would also add that the thing that I think is really key to even having them address, you know, what, why, and who is mindset. And if that mindset isn't there and what we call in my practice mind readiness Mm -hmm. Um, that is your first action, right? Um, I, we talked about it in our last po podcast. If, uh, prioritizing is making that decision before you've even done the action, that is your first action, right? Making that right. decision. And so that mindset has to take place first. You have to be willing to be in a place where you say, hmm, I know to what standard I want to be able to hold myself. And I need to ask myself, right, right, what, why, and who I'm doing this for. Um, otherwise, there's no motivation, no passion behind it. Yeah, I think I think what and why are little sectors, mm -hmm. or, or sorry, what and who are little sectors of why, right. right? They those fall into the why category. The way I see it is that the why, the what, the who, you can think about those as mediators between the action. And the goal. So oftentimes it's the thing that's left out because, and, and I, I think it's actually important to sometimes leave it out okay. first. It didn't have to be, but in regards to where you're at on your teeter totter, going yes. back to like the, the first episode that, like, when we talked about this, that sent us down this spiral yes, <laughs> exactly. of, of, of lifestyle strength, right? Is that you can set your goal and you can have your vision mm -hmm. of the things that you want to achieve or that you need to achieve, whatever it is. And then understanding that you have to have action on the other end of the spectrum in order to achieve those things. And those things are always balancing. I see the why as the mediator between those two things. Okay. Because you can say you want something and you can take action to getting that thing. And oftentimes... You attain that thing and it's not what you expected. Or you attain it and it's everything you expected it to be and it's awesome, right? Mm -hmm. And your why can help you to continue on that path of, you know, not just accomplishing a goal and saying, all right, hanging up the coat, I'm done with it. Right. Your why helps you to redial in and say, okay, I'm leaned over so far to the goal side mm -hmm. that I'm, I'm, I'm not doing anything. So why should I, like, I'll, I'm just thinking about getting this thing and I'm not actually doing it. Right. So why is that? Mm -hmm. Do I, am I focused on the right thing? Right. And is, do I really want that? And so that why helps you get back to the middle so that you can either reestablish a goal or go back into the action of what it takes to get there. Right. And I, I feel like we need, I feel like that develops as time goes on. Well, because shouldn't sometimes, that be the goal, right? To sometimes we process? take blind action mm -hmm. because sometimes we just need to go. Right. Sometimes we don't need to think. We need to get out of our own way, right? Mm -hmm. And we need to just action, action, action. And other times we get caught up in the vision of what we want and we're just so obsessed with the thing that we want that we're not really looking at what's right in front of us 
to do the thing we need to do to get there. Right. And I think the why is the balancer. Okay. It's what, does that make sense? It does make sense. I would also say like maybe the way I'm viewing it is when we're doing anything, the we want to reach the goal, but the goal isn't the end all be all. Because there should be some lessons learned. There should be some habits built. Um, And if you have that why, that why is always going to propel you to the next goal after that. Um, You know, it's life, man. It keeps going. So after one goal, there's another goal. And and realistically, as you reach these goals, in my practice, we call that leveling up. Mm -hmm. You're simply leveling up. And and yes, not to say your why can't adjust because it will as you level up Mm -hmm. but the reality is is build that foundation build something sustainable for your future self don't just say okay uh i began here xyz i'm done (laughs) Uh, also again not life right Right. um life is very organic um the next thing comes after the one thing that you've done that's why in our previous podcast i just said oh prioritizing is just choosing one thing over another That's how I've always seen it in my mind, Mm -hmm. because ultimately you're simply going to always be choosing something over something else. You're slowly going to be evolving. Even with your goals, you're going to reach it. You're going to level up and a new goal comes into play. But you yourself are building principles and habits that are sustainable. Yeah, Yeah. absolutely. And I think to your point, I think that's one of the reasons we should set really, really big goals. Because it can be overwhelming in the sense of saying, okay, I have this goal, I achieved it, now I have to do the next one, I achieved this one, now I have to do the next one, so on and so forth. I think people can get exhausted of that Mm -hmm. oftentimes when they feel like there, there is no means to an end because we are creatures of always seeking comfort. Mm -hmm. We want to take the easiest route possible. But I believe that when you can set a, a really, really massive goal, not not in the realms of things that necessarily have never been done, right? Okay. If that's you, go for it. But I think goals that are on just a large scale, so looking at your life over the course of 10 years rather than 10 weeks. Okay. And saying, you know, when I turn 30 years old, 40 years old, like what is the vision for what I want my life to look like? Mm-hmm. Okay. Whatever that is. Yeah. Who's your Whether, future self? Who's, who, is, who is my future self? You know, who do I want in my circle? Mm-hmm. How do I want my family to look? Yeah. How, you know, I want to feel physically, mentally, emotionally. All, all those questions we've already gone over. Right. right? And then day by day always reminding myself of the why and recognizing that it's okay to change that why because your why can be anything yeah and we get attached to the reasons why we should do something just like we get attached to goals yeah and i think as we live circumstances change we change we learn we develop and we realize that why we're doing something may be serving us or it may not be serving us. Right. Example, right? When I first got into fitness, the reason why I wanted to attain like six pack abs was to get more attention from women, to build notoriety, to like to be able to model and like to do all those things that became my why Mm -hmm. and it drove me to taking really really massive action and then as those little checkpoints as those goals start getting ticked off it's like well the goal still kind of exists it's like continue that goal take the next step on that goal but the why starts to become something different because I started changing I started realizing that like okay well maybe like getting down to 5% body fat for me is not the healthiest thing to do. And I'm getting ready now to go into coaching professionally in these other people. And most other people either don't have that goal or that mountain is a very, very massive mountain, nor do I even consider that 
healthy, healthy anymore, yeah. right? Right. And so the why to get six pack abs is totally different. You know, for a person like me, you can still have the goal. Right. It's the thing that you want, and that's fun. But the why is totally different. Right. And that ultimately changes the goal, and then that changes the action, and that that's what mediates. That's what I mean by when it's a mediator. Right. It's you're constantly getting the needle pushed back and forth. But if you don't have that then you're taking blind action with no reciprocation as to where you're getting to your goal or you still feel like you have the goal, but because you have no why, the action feels meaningless. Yes. Yeah. And that's that's what I had been experiencing with this particular client was that you come in and you do this work and you say this you want this goal, but then you don't have anything connecting the dots. And so it just seems like work. Right. It seems like work and... You feel bad because you're, you don't feel like you're getting closer to the goal. Right. Even though you might be. Yeah. You don't, there, you feel purposeless. There's no, there's no, um, it's like, it's like shooting from the hip. I'm not a hunter. Right. Mm -hmm. But it's like, you know, there's this target and instead of taking precise aim mm -hmm. and sighting in your scope and shooting the target, you're just firing bullets from the hip without aiming. Mm -hmm. It's like, well. Okay, you say you have the goal, and now you're willing to pull the trigger, but you're not even really paying attention to like, what's happening. Right. Like, you're not getting you, the chances of you hitting it are so slim, but you're still going to just keep sitting there pulling your trigger, and eventually you're going to run out of ammo. Right. Man, I love analogies. I just I came know, up with right? that off the top of my head. I love that too. Just because, you know, like you said, um, at the end of the day, you run out, right? Um, whatever yeah. fueled her in the beginning. She never had a why or was held onto it. Willpower, it was probably willpower. Right? Yeah, exactly. And you could run out of willpower. Mm -hmm. And then boom, she's left feeling empty. Um, you know, the biggest thing that when you were talking that I take away from it is like, we can't forget that there, all of this, regardless of what goal you set, regardless of your why, is supposed to equip you and grow you as an individual in life. Um, you know, our goal should always to be growing and changing and evolving um, and doing better. And and more importantly, uh, having people like the crazy thing is, is she she might be shooting from the hip, but she's literally taking her time and money and has sought out a practitioner to specifically right. aid in her goal. But she has no why. So for an outsider, I'd be like, dang, man, she's putting a lot of effort for for what she perceives as no results. And the reality is, is like she has sought somebody of knowledge um, to help her. And when we know better, we do better. Mm -hmm. um, so that should be something that is, is coming to her, right? Like you're, you're being able to educate her and she's going, oh, okay, yeah, I should be questioning this at this point. If, if I right. thought I knew what my why was, now that I'm knowing better and now that, like you said, it's funny that you said earlier layers, um, I describe with my clients that um, as far as like human anatomy, physically with the muscles, that you're an onion. And our goal is to pull, peel back a layer. And each time you're in, we want to peel back a new layer. But if you wait too long and you come back in, well, that layer has been applied again. Um, and we're peeling off that same layer. Um, and we want to be getting ahead of the curve, not to use the COVID term, but I kind of grabbed and used it since then in my practice is like, I always want somebody to be ahead of the curve um, when it co comes to the recovery and it com comes to those layers that we're mm -hmm. peeling off. And just like you as a practitioner, she's coming in and the goal is to always be moving forward. Um, and when you're not, what does that look like? And And like you're saying, that mediation is like, if you feel like you're in that spot and you cannot keep those layers off, you should be asking yourself why. Yeah. Do you really want that thing? Yeah. Because if you don't have a reason why, then you've probably set a goal with no intention around why you should get it. Yeah. Man. Because if you can't answer that question, then maybe you don't really want it. Mm hmm Right? And sometimes it takes asking those hard questions. I have... Um, I have another client who's a therapist, and um, she was telling me this story about somebody who was battling with addiction, and, you know, they say that they want to quit, right? Mm -hmm. They say they're going to go to therapy, 
But then we talk about, you know, they would talk about the steps that need to be taken in order to get clean. Mm -hmm. They said, well, I'm not willing to do that. You know, I can't, I can't do that. And so rather than saying, okay, you can't do this, maybe we can do something else or da, 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 you know, you can run in circles. She asked a simple question or saying, well, are you sure is it like, are you sure you really want it then? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because you say you want it, but you're not willing to do the thing that it takes. And I think that's a telltale sign that you don't even, that you don't understand your why. Right. You don't really know why. Right. And so that's when you start dissecting the why into like, what are you doing it for? Mm -hmm. Who are you? Who are you doing it for? Right. And right. I think those things are, are really powerful, you know, especially when you bring in other people that you care about. If you can do it for, I think, I think if you can do it for yourself and love yourself, that that's extremely powerful that I don't think a lot of people think about. I think if you can do it for your kids, that's extremely powerful. Mm -hmm. If you, obviously, if you do it for your husband or your wife, your partner, your parents, even like your friends, you do it for them too, because lots of people in the world are dealing with really hard shit. Mm -hmm. And if you've already identified some sort of solution to a goal, right? But but you're choosing, you're willingly choosing to not to not take that action or not have a why or not have a reason why you should go after learning and and upgrading yeah leveling up yeah then you know you're not leading the way for the people in your life and it doesn't mean that you have to be the conqueror that you have to always be the person carrying everybody else but more than likely somebody in your life could also use that help and if that is the thing that gets you to to move forward yeah absolutely to take that leadership role on so that you can be an example for them or so that you could help them then that's a really, really powerful why. You know, what's ironic is I think uh, sometimes people who, um, although it is very, motiv it can be very motivating. It could be, again, if you don't have um, self-love and self-worth and if you don't feel that for yourself and you're not doing these things for yourself, but you are motivated to do it for somebody else, um, mm -hmm. friends and family, I find it interesting because when you were talking, I thought, oh, well, why do people do it for other people? Because they have to. They, Yeah. I mean, maybe your perspective is they have to. But mm -hmm. from my perspective, it's because there's a sense of comfort knowing somebody is either dependent on you or somebody loves you enough to say, hey, I know you don't even see what this is going to do for you. But, like, I know who you can be and who you are, and I want you to be that person. And that can fuel us and motivate Absolutely. us. Absolutely. Um, I mean, it makes me feel, like, all warm inside thinking about that, yeah. you know? Just to have people on your side who are, like, rooting for you and on your worst day are going, dude, I know who you are. I know who you can be. Right. Um, and this, this is why there's that pressure that I, I'm applying to you. Because it, whether it's direct mm -hmm. or indirect, there is some level of pressure when you have a who that right. you're doing something for. Um, even wrapping it around to practitioners, like uh, we apply a sense of pressure. Mm -hmm. You've paid us to apply that pressure. Um, mm -hmm. But we know, and we know we're not blowing hot air when we give you advice and we know who you could be. Right. Um, and when we say who you could be, we don't mean the person that's 10 pounds lighter. Um, we don't mean that you all of a sudden become this pro athlete and set PRs. We're, we're talking about the happier you. We're talking about the pain-free you, the mobile. Mm -hmm. You know, you're mobile, you're functional, you're healthy. That's who we're talking about. Like, that's you're, who you're we are You're actively perceive. taking action to progress in the way that you choose to progress. Absolutely. You know, I think it's funny you, br you bring that up, too, because recently I saw there was a, a study, and I, I can't pull from where, but they uh, they looked at a bunch of people in their over 65. Okay. And they just surveyed, they did a big survey, and asking them, you know, if you could go back to any age, 
in your life, what age would you be again? And on average, the most common answer was age 36. Really? And I find that really funny because most people will like thinking about it right now. It's probably like, oh, you're 20s, right? Like you, mm-hmm. that's when you go back to. And they looked into hypothesizing why people wanted to go back to age 36 because you think about most 36-year-olds right now and you ask most 36-year-olds, they're probably some of the most stressed mm-hmm. age you could be, right? Like you having kids, you're probably is it busier than you ever have been in your life. Mm-hmm. You have the most amount of responsibility. Yeah. And I think that that in and of itself should speak volumes because we, especially in hindsight, we get gratitude and fulfillment from giving right. to other people. And you think about the average 36-year-old, they are probably giving all of their time to somebody else, whether that's their kids, whether that's their coworkers, it's their friends, it's everybody else and their, their spouse, mm-hmm. everybody else, they're, they're giving their time, their energy. And even though it's filled with high amounts of stress in the moment, yeah, you know, looking back, you look at that as a really good time in your life because you were so productive in being able to give your time to other things. Yeah. And I, I think that that was just a really interesting study that goes along perfectly with what we're talking about today. So it's like, it's like, uh, like I said, that silent pressure, or even if it's the direct pressure, sometimes being put under pressure um, can motivate you and mold you into this amazing human being that you didn't even know you could be. It creates you, gratitude. Yeah, absolutely yeah. it does. Because you look back, like, like you're saying, like if somebody's 65 going, well, I mean... Uh, I, I, what am I doing with my life now, right? Like, I've got all this free time. There's no, there's no applied pressures uh, of any sort, really, at that point. And I would actually wager that's why people love becoming grandparents, because they still need that purpose. They still want to be driven and, and pressured in some ways, right, to perform mm-hmm. and, and to play a role. And they, we all want to be needed, I mean, that's just the reality of it, right? Um, But those pressures can motivate somebody to set goals and to ask themselves why. Yeah. Um, I think you got it backwards, too. I did? Some people want to be needed. I think we all need to be wanted. Oh, wait. What did I say? You said want to be needed. Oh. Some of us. Yes. I mean, some people absolutely do want to be needed. Some people that gets tiring and when they're needed all the time, right? (laughs) But like when you're, when you have, er, we all have the need. Yes. Yes, of course. Yes. That's what I meant. Absolutely. Agreed. Agreed. (laughs) I mean, could be the other way for a short period of time. It reminds me of this, um, really like listening to Alan Watts. I don't know if you're familiar Mm -hmm. with Alan Watts. He's a, he's a British philosopher who studied a lot of Eastern cultures and I believe it's a Hindu idea and I cannot pronounce the name of the idea even if I were to like pull it up on my phone it's a it's a Hindu word but he goes through analogy of in regards to life it's kind of like playing basketball and I'm going to kind of touch on it a little bit with my own take but essentially what he says is you know we get the most, we're playing this game, right? And we mm-hmm. get the most fulfillment by giving the other person the ball, right? Because the whole game of basketball is not about doing it yourself. Right. It's about recognizing where other people are on the court and saying, hey, you, you have that ball. You go have, you go put that in the hoop, mm-hmm. right? And so I think, I think coming back to understanding why you should do the things that you do and that you should set the goals that you should set and you should strive for something more and something greater and to become strong, to become stronger as a person, it's understanding that you're going to have to work these skills on the court. Like you have to put in the free throws. You have to put in the conditioning. You have to put in the dribbling skills and understanding how how the game works for what your, you know, what your goal is, which is putting the ball in the basket. Yeah. But... Then, while taking on that responsibility, and this goes to the who, that that secures your why, yeah. is after you've done all that practice and you've put in all that work, giving, giving, giving the mm-hmm. ball to somebody else and saying, hey, you go do it. 
I'll I'll do it when I have to. Mm -hmm. I'll 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 take on the responsibility. Like I'm gonna play a role in the game, but more often than not, mm -hmm. I'm giving the ball up to somebody else mm -hmm. so that they can make the play. Yeah. And I think that drives us. Ooh. Man, I like that. <laughs> I like that a lot. I'm like I'm like envisioning that game right now and just that analogy of life like you're talking about. Um I think it's beautiful. Like I don't think I think going back to that pressure thing, I think so many times if you ask that thirty six year old right now, they would go, I don't see it that way. Yeah, right. They're like, in <laughs> fact, they're probably like, Well, I, I perceive it as I'm I'm the only one on the court and I'm the yeah. only one putting the practice in. I'm the only one and how often do we get kind of caught up into our world of thinking like I am the only one? But the reality is is he, she mm -hmm whoever probably has a spouse <laughs> that also feels like they're the only one. Yeah. Um, and the parents and the friends and the kids and turns out they're all in the same court and the right. coworkers, you know, you're all, um, together. It made me think of, uh, this morning I was talking to one of the guys at the gym and he's headed back to Australia and he lived there for a year, a few years. And he was telling me that when he was over there initially for school, he was taking these business classes and he said because Australians pretty much you don't meet too many Australians that don't travel outside of Australia. Like mm -hmm. most of them have all traveled outside of Australia. Um, but they're taught in business school in um, college that they need to be aware and they practice this in Australia as well, that everything is an us and not a me. And I was like, ooh, OK, so what do you mean? He said, you know, from the CEO to the mailman. The CEO is probably bros with the mailman in the same building. Mm -hmm. And he was talking about how, you know, maybe here in the U.S. we do it a lot more. We create that divide, um, whereas the prime minister will go run in the park and it's just another day and people can come up and get pictures with him. Whereas here in the U.S., it would if our president wanted to go run in the park, it would be you know, two months out and a big, big, uh, a showmanship Security of something, around. Security, yeah. a big show of things. And, um, and so kind of going back to that, like with the game, it's always an us and not just a me, but how often do we tend to make it a me thing, right? It's, right. it's me. I have this much pressure. I'm the only one practicing. I'm the only one putting in the time. Yeah. And to continue on, the analogy, as you said that, I, I think about this myself because I, I think one of my weaknesses is letting new people that are on the bench into the game. It's like oftentimes, even though over, I think over, I think COVID actually mm -hmm. really helped me personally with this was, is recognizing that like, Hey, it's, it's about giving the ball up to other people and yeah. letting them continue to play. And, mm -hmm. and that is a, a responsibility of mine that ultimately is what helps us all play to better, play to better together as a team. Yeah. But then also recognizing that there are some people that have been sitting on the bench the whole time and they haven't been playing with you and they've been outside looking and we get used to playing with the same people mm -hmm. and that's where we close off our circle. And I have a very, very tight knit circle. I know a lot of people, but the amount of people that I would bend over backwards for and do absolutely anything for is pretty, pretty small. Hmm. And I'm trying to do more of that to do, maybe not like, you know, obviously like my family comes first. Right. Right. So not necessarily putting them on the same level, but just doing more, mm -hmm. getting them some minutes in the game, like seeing somebody on the bench saying, Hey, you know what? Like, come on into the game. I'll sit out for a minute and we'll, let's push you for and, and that builds a stronger relationship with other people, which inherently strengthens your why. And it helps you to set bigger goals because you have a stronger why. Absolutely. Uh, and also, you don't want to be known as the ball hog, do you, Lucas? Right, right. Well, I'm saying like you can <laughs> you can pass the ball around, but eventually people get tired of just watching the same people play the same game. Yeah. Uh, you know taking it back to like the business front which leads just to life of I watched this video and he was breaking down some key things as an individual in business that you want to apply in life and he was like ironically here all these three principles come from the bible 
And one of them that you were just discussing was we get so comfortable in where we are. But like even biblically, it says for business, you do not store all your, you don't put all your uh, eggs in one basket. That's literally the 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 use of this. Like mm-hmm. that's why we should be equipped and should have practiced enough that you know your skills and that you can invest in different courts and you can pass the ball off to other people and the reward is going to be tenfold versus sitting on your in your one court playing basketball with the same people that you've always played basketball with. Right. So, I mean, going back, you, you like you said, it strengthens just going back to why you do what you do. Um, and I think ultimately it equips you for a better future um, and makes you a stronger person at the end of the day. Yeah, it, it helps everybody involved to play a better game. Mm-hmm. And ultimately, like that's, at least for me, I talk about this with my clients and to why I choose to continue to train mm-hmm. at the level that I do. And there are a bunch of different little smaller goals built into this but like ultimately Mm -hmm. like the big picture for me is that i want to keep playing the game yeah the goal the goal isn't because i don't want to get to the end of the game you get to the end of the game it's like okay well what are we going to do now right now i got to find a new game i don't want to find a new game Mm -hmm. i want to figure out how and i think ultimately it's how we win as human beings and how we get stronger is not figuring out how you can win the game the fastest or the hardest. It's figuring out how long you can keep playing the game. Because if you can keep playing, then you're really never going to lose. Ooh. Ooh. You're never going to lose. You're only going to learn and you're going to get better at playing the game. Yeah, like like we've been discussing, and right? ultimately, you does, started it, out does it even matter? Or? Because the end of the game is when we die as far as we know yeah and not to take it to a morbid place but like you know and then what happens after that alex hormozzi is a really good thing and this sounds it, it sounds morbid it sounds like it's a like a really dark thought but it also is very can put you at peace i think and you can take this one of two ways and i choose to take the the better perspective in my opinion okay the optimistic perspective Mm-hmm. There's a pessimistic, there's an optimistic perspective. The optimistic perspective is that, well, hey, like you can amass all this wealth, you can you can attain this body, you can build a business, you can you can accomplish all these really, really awesome things in life. And in two or three generations, like is anybody gonna remember your name? Right. Like the the house you owned is gonna belong to somebody else, the property you own is gonna belong to somebody else. All that you really have left in like what is like legacy are the people that you impacted. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you your kids, if you had kids, they will take you down. Like they will take your genetics down physically. That will live on. Right. But the only other thing that really lives on is the people you impacted because you passed them the ball. Yeah. And then they took that lesson that they learned and they passed somebody else the ball. Right. And then that continued to get to get passed down. So and what's I, the what's the negative? To this? Well, well, I don't really know if I want to point it out, but like I can see how somebody would take that negatively and say, "Oh, okay, well then nothing really matters. That I can do what I want to. Oh. I should just be able to like you know live in pleasure." And you know what? Absolutely, if you want to take that mindset, then you go right ahead because I don't think that you're going to be fulfilled in life, and I don't think that you're going to have. I just don't think you're going to be happy if you choose your why. If if that is your why. If your why yeah. is nothing matters, so why do anything? Well, you know what? You have a right to believe that. Absolutely. Like, I'm not going to stop you from it. Yeah. Do I think you're going to be fulfilled and happy and grateful and have, a, a you know, a lot of people you love around you to play the game with? No. Probably not. Or you're not going to have purpose, right? Because yeah. you just said that if your why 
is that nothing matters and there you, essentially no you're purpose. saying there is no you're purpose. choosing to not play the game right and that means you're just going to sit there and watch other people play the game and then build a resentment on them doing that right because they think it you know because it matters to them right yeah or because it matters to them hmm. and you know i don't know about you but i don't like sitting on the sideline no I don't, no, doesn't make me feel I don't good. like lose. I don't have. Any, I don't like having resentment right. all the time. Right, helps in the gym sometimes when we want to lift heavy yes. things. <laughs> it serves a purpose, but on this podcast in this moment, maybe, guys, maybe it does not. Not today. not today, and not when you're on the court of life, and you don't need to be a ball ho- ball hog like Lucas. Um, Excuse me. <laughs> well, so but that's the thing, right? Maybe you started playing the game, and you started out as a ball hog. And that's the the ideas well, over okay. time. That's why we grow, right? Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like that's that's the ideas over time. You've you've grown as a person, and you've understood that to play the game, you need to pass the ball and give somebody else that opportunity to also grow. Um, I was thinking about it today, and to tie it all together, it's like it's a smaller world than we think, and it's more of an us than a me. Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, because we're all going to the same place. <laughs> so let's play the game together, guys. Yeah, absolutely. I don't think I could wrap it up any better. Awesome. Well, on to the next one. Peace out. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you.